This week I'm going on an exciting adventure to two of my favourite cities, London and Paris. It's so good to be back in my little flat. The elusive Nick and I both use it when we're in town. And it's always quite fascinating to see what's been left in the fridge. This month is another classic. Mind you, I think I'll be having that. Bonus! Maybe I should go and buy some milk though. Yeah, Beautiful cousin is meeting me in London. Hey, hey! <laughs> Wow, you're having two burgers. Yeah. How are you not enormous? This is all I eat all week. This, this is all I'm going to eat. Oh really? That's it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I can't believe you. So, come on then. Let's have a bite. Five guys, this is such a great moment. <laughs> it's hitting the spot. So, did you get your French passport? Yes, I did. You lucky git. They're oh, being yeah. so difficult about mine. Were you speaking to a female passport? Um, person. Maybe. <laughs> my cousin is a builder and he is measuring my window to make a new one for me but he's balancing somewhat precariously and this is quite scary to watch. Amory are you safe out there? What's next? Were there three or? That's two. Just those two? Just those two. Brilliant. It is a beautiful sunshiny day in London and I'm off to vote in the European elections. All done. That took 30 seconds and I'm free to go and have a picnic in the park with my friend. I'm waiting for my friend Marina to turn up and this is a pretty perfect spot to wait. me rosé for you. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I don't know what the goose wants. Um, the goose hasn't shown a preference yet as to which wine he Maybe you can put have. two bottles in front of him. I'm pretty sure that there we go. the rosé seems to be interesting him. There Didn't know there go. were going to be three of us in this picnic today. He has his own grass. We can't do that. We need the smoked salmon and the cheese and the salad and the olive bread and the brie. Mm. <laughs> There, there no. is a leaf hanging up. You can't body. have any of the picnic. We just can't get rid of the goose. It's like a safari picnic. Mm. That's why I'm keeping my eye on you. <laughs> yeah, do, the minute I look at you, you start pretending to eat grass, but I know that the second my back is turned, you're sneaking closer and closer. It started with a couple. <laughs> it's like day of the triffids, only it's day of the geese. I think he wants my wine. Oh, hello. Welcome to our picnic. Oh, squirrel. Oh, yes. Okay, it's complete now. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> this is insane. It's so unfair. I'm at the hairdressers miles away from home in London, and I've just had the most exciting news from Marie about what's happening at the chateau. And I'm not there to see it. So while Stephanie is in London, something very exciting have uh, happened. There is a little chick, um, maybe new this morning, I'm not sure. Have a look. In the corner, little one. Oh, it's so cute. Lalonde have now a new chick. I'm going to collect my American friend Mason from the tube station because we have a super exciting day ahead. We're going to go and see Harry Potter, both parts. This is it, the golden ticket. Oh, it's even slightly sparkling. <laughs> There's magic abound in dumpling land. We're fortifying ourselves with a ton of dumplings and then we're off to the theatre. I've been waiting for this moment for ages. This is how excited we are. And in between the two parts of the play, we're having suitably Harry Potter-esque cocktails at the Opium Cocktail Bar. Harry Potter was amazing. I can't describe enough how awesome it is. And if you can, you should definitely go. And now I'm just grabbing a cup of tea and waiting for Mason to appear. And when he does, we're going to go off on an adventure that I've planned in London called A Tale of Two Towers. The first tower is the Monument. 
It was built to commemorate the Great Fire which destroyed two-thirds of London in 1666. In just three days, the fire annihilated over 13,000 houses and 80 churches. Just as in the recent fire at Notre Dame in Paris, London lost the spire of its St Paul's Cathedral. King Charles II and Parliament vowed that London would rise more beautiful than it had ever been. And the Latin inscription ends with the words, Haste is seen everywhere. London rises again, whether with greater speed or greater magnificence is doubtful. Three short years complete that which was considered the work of an age. We have to walk up all 311 steps of this tower. It's a long way up. I've brought Mason right up to the top of the tower. We're exhausted. When it was first built, this monument dominated London's skyline. But now it's dwarfed by the Shard, London's tallest building, which is going to be our second tower of the day. Going down is a heck of a lot easier. The Shard has another huge advantage over the monument in that it has a lift to go to the 57th floor where we're going to have a drink in Gong Bar. From our table here we can even see the monument. But now on to more important things, choosing my cocktail. This is so cute! It's actually pretty delicious. Wow, the sun has just come up after the rain and there is a rainbow right over the city of London and you can see Tower Bridge below. And now the part I'm most excited about. I'm finally going to go and eat at Mike's restaurant, the Harwood Arms. Ever since Mike Robinson saved the day and made an impromptu dessert in Vlog 62, I've been dying to come to his restaurant in Fulham. We are about to have a venison faggot, something that Mason assures me would never be seen on an American menu. We're starting with whipped chicken liver and thyme hobnobs and asparagus with duck ham and a soft boiled pullet egg. And really embarrassingly, I've gone for 45 day age steak and all the trimmings whilst Mason's having light cod and cauliflower. And I'm finishing it all with a marmalade ice cream sandwich. So insanely delicious, I can barely describe it. I'm definitely going to need an Uber home. Gare d'Austerlitz. We've made it to Paris and now we're trying to find the boat that we'll be staying on. Yes, we found our boat! And it even has the same golden swan as Lalande. And easily one of the most glorious hotel rooms I've ever been in in my life. I can't believe that I accidentally dressed to match the room and now I am completely camouflaged. I love everything. It's making me want to go back to Lalande and paint the room entirely orange. I'm not convinced that that would fit well with a period. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> We've come to see Notre Dame Cathedral, but after what I saw at the monument in London, I'm filled with hope and already scaffolding is going up on the roof. Obviously Notre Dame is closed during works, so instead we've come to visit Paris's second largest church, Saint-Sulpice. Its extraordinary facade was inspired by Sir Christopher Wren's new St Paul Cathedral in London, built to replace the one damaged by fire in 1666. And now it's time to round off the day with a spritz on a perfect Parisian evening. And enjoy the incredible view from my bed. about to eat Mavi.
But as usual, the only downside is that in France it's believed that a tepid cup of water next to a tea bag constitutes a cup of tea. It doesn't. Nothing happens. The time has come to find the ribbon shop to be able to finally finish my pink bedroom. But to get there, we're thinking of trying a new form of transport, a scooter. What could possibly go wrong? Nothing. It's going to be perfect. There you go. Have fun. Kickstart to get up speed, press the throttle to accelerate, squeeze the brake to slow down. Well, what's the throttle and where's the brake? What do I do? What do I do? I don't know how to start it. Oh my God. Against all the odds, we've arrived in one piece at Passementerie de Clare. This place is a treasure trove that's been making stunning trimmings since 1852. Their work is absolutely stunning, but sadly far out of my price range, which is made more understandable when you see the incredible methods which they still use to create them today on old looms. The ribbon I needed would have been 6,000 euros, so I've come to a cafe instead. Now I know that I can't afford any trimmings and I can't ride a scooter, I'm going to recover doing things I can do, which are drink a glass of wine and eat some mussels. So maybe no ribbon, but delicious mussels and asparagus and quail's eggs and then ravioli with summer truffles. Mmm, I love Paris. <laughs> I'm super excited today because Michael Potts is joining us in Paris. What a floral vision of loveliness. Is this because of the Chelsea Flower Show? Oh, no, this is a recent trip to England. Ooh. We're having breakfast in Angelina's, which has Michael's favourite hot chocolate in the world. There's plenty good. We're all going together to visit a museum that I have wanted to see for years. This mansion was built for the rich banker Moïse de Camandeau. It was based on the style of Marie Antoinette's little palace, Le Petit Trianon at Versailles, but it was built between 1911 and 1913. Shortly after its completion, the First World War broke out and Moïse's son, Nissim, became a fighter pilot for the French. He wrote letters to his father nearly every day from the war, but tragically in 1917 his plane was shot down and he was killed. His father left the building and all of its contents to France in memory of his son, Nissim de Camondo. There's a bewildering array of treasures in this house. The two green chairs in this room belong to Louis XVI's sister. And the Japanese lacquered bronze sake bottle in this room belonged to Louis XV's mistress, Madame de Pompadour. The gilt wood folding screen at the right of this oval drawing room comes from Louis XVI's games room in Versailles. The beautiful green dining room has lots of silver terrines, which all come from a service commissioned by Catherine the Great of Russia for her lover, Count Orloff. Just off it is the much smaller porcelain room, lined with stunning services, and this is where Moïse de Camondor would eat when he was by himself. The biggest dinner service in here is one of the famous Sèvres Buffon services. Each piece was made with different birds taken from the thousand or so engravings of the natural history of birds published after 1770 by the Count of Buffon. Honestly, I could stare at these for hours, but I think the boys are getting a bit impatient. Do you feel we've got a bit of work to do at Lalonde? Yeah, I don't know what to be doing all this time. Okay, but this has given us inspiration. This small room was known as the English Salon, and in the middle there's Marie Antoinette's sewing table. All of these things are really beautiful to see, but it's actually the decorative details that are inspiring me the most for La Lande. I want to hang paintings in this way using ribbons and tassels, and I'll start with my bedroom as an experiment. I'm fascinated by the curtains. I'm just looking at the way all of the curtains are done. It's a different pattern different swag design in every single room and some of them I can definitely recreate at Leland. This was Moise's private library where he would sit and peruse auction catalogues to add to his collection. 
But I have no time for reading because I'm distracted by the curtains. They're just like the tails from Swag and Tails on Pelmet, and they're not designed to be closed. We need to start from scratch with La Land. Just from scratch. I mean, for a start, all of the doors should be mirrored like this. How oh, beautiful that you can barely even notice that it's a door. Most surprisingly, this house isn't just beautiful. Even though it looks 18th century, it's very modern. It had lots of great bathrooms, electric lighting, an elevator, even a vacuum cleaning system. And the luxurious kitchen has a huge coal-fired range cooker and an enormous rotisserie. They even have the same electric call bell system that we had in the Edwardian house that I grew up in. And this is making me realise what a great idea a tiled ceiling is in a kitchen. Easy to clean and so light. These are the rooms that easily remind me the most of Lalande. The washing up room, possibly the room we spend the most time in there. And the servant's dining room. I would love to go back in time and listen to the laughter and gossip in this room. Well done, Mason. We leave you alone for five minutes and you do something marvellous. It's like bringing my own personal garden having you here, Michael. Mm, good. After all that excitement, we've made it back home and it's good to see Lalande again. And I'm inspired to do so much work here now. Oh, as soon as we're back, Marie's taking us to the baby chicks. It's good to be home. <laughs>